so um, I never saw myself doing homeschool actually neither Sal or I had any plan to homeschool um, but just when Mila my oldest was um, turning four we had a friend from church who actually homeschooled her like 10 children um, she's a pretty amazing woman uh, recommend homeschooling so we looked into it and, and started doing it and uh, well researched it um, realized there were great ways to socialize your kids you know it didn't mean it was gonna make them socially awkward necessarily or anything like that so we um, kind of sound I just jumped in and um, we've definitely never regretted it okay so 30 crunches all right, girls. Whew. Oh, this is gonna be really hard. Are we doing it now? I'm not... Yes. Yep. Here we go. Thirty crunches. Let's go. Wait, we're doing twenty, not thirty. <laughs> Mila's trying to kill us over here. I get to do fifteen though. Sometimes. Privileges. <laughs> okay, I lost count. Mila, how much are you Actually, at? Let's go ahead and just do 15 because we're running a little short on time this morning. Okay. So just do 15, okay? okay. We just got to uh, 25. Let's say we're at 11. <laughs> Remember, uh, okay. at jumping jacks or. Shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. Hey, up, up, up. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Squats. Squats. All right, how many? Fifteen. All right, fifteen squats. Stretches. All right, good. Let's break. Let's get this place cleaned up. After a morning workout and stretches, the Sanchez family prepares to do their daily Bible reading and prayers before beginning the day's lessons. Today's lessons have been modified, though, as they plan to travel to Sal to see him for Thanksgiving. <sighs> Alright, cool. You want to carry that out there for me? And, hey! Give me some! Give me some! Wait, push through. Alright. Why don't you go brush your teeth so you're ready, okay? sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over for um, 
over to a centurion named Julius, who belonged to the Imperial Re Regiment. We boarded a ship from... <laughs> where? Andromedium? So I would say it. From there, about <laughs> to sail for ports along the coast of the Providence of Asia, and we put out to sea. All right, so since today's a little different, let's do this. We're gonna do an independent study hour. So Mila, would you grab that Time Magazine right there? And I want you just to work on doing a- uh, Global warming. A skim through it, yeah, the global warming one. Do a, a skim okay. through it. Hang on till I, uh, for your, you know, take a look at the captions, take a look at the headlines. And I would like you to write a short paper on the top three arguments you can find for global warming. What it, you know, according to, because it has several articles on it, because the whole magazine, that whole issue is focused on it. So what are the, um, the top three, you know, signs or evidences or arguments for global warming, okay? Lai and Hadassah, I'm going to have you girls go sit at the table. I'm going to go get your workbook. Okay, and I have a different different things for you girls to do. Um, our reading, we can do in the car while we're traveling down to see Dad for Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah, I finished my craft on the birthday I was uh, You can do that until I come in with your, until I get back with your um, workbook. Yeah. Another question. What do I do with Legolas? Because he wants to learn too. Um, well, if he doesn't distract you, you can't have him out. It's on your lap or whatever, okay? As long as you can get your work done. <laughs> you look just like your puppy. Wakey, wakey, it's a makey. Alright, go ahead and sit at the table. I'll be right back, ladies, with your workbooks, okay? Yes, Mom. <laughs> The girls continued to work diligently on their appointed tasks. Yes, no, no. Okay. All right, ladies, so fill me in each of you. What was the most interesting thing you learned so far? This. And what's this? Well, it's an uh, evolutionary twist between these guys. Okay. Look, this one has stuff like fangs, mm -hmm. and this one, his tusks are on his bottom leg, and they go down. Okay. Um, this is how and, they've and evolved or adapted over time? Yeah, and another thing. I was wondering what's the proof for this. Did they from bones? Probably. I bet it and tells this you. this looks like a boar. It this does look like a boar. More like a boar. It is very boarish looking, this, huh? This one has a pretty big effect in this place where I haven't gotten to yet. It's interesting. So you're saying the flooding in one area of the world and drought in the other can be caused by the same cause. <laughs> if this book's information is accurate, yes. All right, cool. Very cool. All right, cool. Well, let's wrap it up. And, uh, I know, I know. We'll have more time again soon. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Let's, let's see, what are we moving on to? Um, 
Is that a short? Mom, I think it's been five minutes. We're going to break for rest time. All right. And so what are the three things you girls can do during rest time? Journaling. Journal or that's what we do. Read or TT? Read. Sleep. That's right. So now. grab your journals. Everybody, we're going to take a short rest time and then uh, can I just finish the use us. One. Sure. Sure. Yep. You can go ahead and finish that part. Okay. Cool. Okay. I'll finish the one that I'm about to do. After a rest period, the family gathers in the living room again for a brief music lesson before getting on the road. Mila and Hadassah, would you girls pair up and just work on a couple simple chords? Mama, I'm going to need your help with tuning my mandolin. Oh, you need a tune? Yep. Would you work with Vanessa on tuning? Tuning? Oh, tuning? And then some of your basic chords? And let me... Vanessa, how about you jump over here? Okay. This is something about opening. Let's get it tuned, and then I'll go grab uh, my phone, okay? Uh-oh, looks like there might be a little bit of rust on the strings here. I think you have some uh, soft strings, though, too. So are hard strings? Uh, yeah. I can kind of feel that in the... Start turning that, and with your other hand, nope, strum it, keep strumming. Let go of this. Ready? This hand. Ready? This hand, use your thumb. Now with your other hand, Ready? I'll just hold the phone. flexible so we our line of work as missionaries um, 
and humanitarian workers, we work all over. So we've done um, a lot of, of counseling and trauma work. Um, in various countries throughout Latin America, both in Central and South America, and then also in Africa. Um, so one of the great things about homeschooling is it's so flexible. We can move from the United States to Mexico to Argentina to Uganda and back again, and the kids never have to interrupt their studies. Um, so that's really awesome. It also, because most of the learning uh, we do, most of the teaching we do, focuses on an immersion style, and uh, that works really good for our girls. And as we move, they get to really dive into and live a lot of what we're learning. So um, when we were in Mexico, they were studying uh, the Aztecs and the... Um, the Olmec and some of the other ancient tribes of Mexico and we got to stop and go to um, some Zapotec ruins which were really neat because that way history just kind of came alive. Mila! Um, so anyway we really are just able to take advantage of uh, a lot of resources globally. Uh, we went to you know, museums in Buenos Aires, and all you have to do at most of these places, any kind of, you know, like, educational facility is just mention that you do homeschooling, and people just love to teach your kids. So we might go to a dinosaur museum, and the kids will actually learn about things like carbon dating, and uh, paleontology, and, and digs, and um, you know, mounds and all kinds of things from the paleontologists themselves who are walking around and explaining things. And um, let me see. So, <coughs> obviously, another thing we focus on a lot is language. Um, the girls are fluent in English and in Spanish, and they're working on their Arabic right now. So, that's really neat because. As they're learning these languages, um, they're getting to use the language and there's purpose to it because they're learning how to communicate with their friends when we're living abroad. They're learning, um, you know, how to interact with society and yet they're learning a language, a foreign language, and it's something that's also going to serve them in their future. So. The thing about homeschool is it's not like in the public school system where you go to school and then you're in school for this hour to this hour and then you leave and you go home and then you're doing home life. Um, you just kind of live. School, it's like it's a lifestyle more than something you do each day. So we just try to incorporate um, everything. Like let's say um, I'm swamped. We have a ton of family coming tomorrow and I'm supposed to make a bunch of food because it's Thanksgiving or whatever. Um, we might turn baking into a lesson on fractions, you know, because uh, we got to follow this recipe and what is two-thirds of a cup and, you know, you can, you can really use, it's learning to use the, your resources in the world around you to teach the kids different things. Um, you know, my my middle daughter, my middle child, Talai, uh, is 11, 12. She turned 12. Talai is 12, and um, she really wants to be a photojournalist, and she has this awesome knack for photography. And so um, a lot of her school focuses on the field of photojournalism. So a lot of her assignments and things like that give her the opportunity to use her camera and to write in a journalistic style when possible. And then because of the different places we go, um, she's learning about how to digitally document different things from um, even when we were just driving through Panama, you know, she had her camera out and 
uh, when we were doing hikes through the rainforest and um, learning how to, you know, to write about those things and record those herself. Um, learning how to interact with different cultures. You know, even something as simple as a 12-year-old with a camera, uh, she's also learning about how to interact with these different cultures to be able to capture it on film. And that's something that a lot of photographers need to learn because not every culture is fine with their picture being taken. You have anywhere on the spectrum of they love their picture being taken to the other side they think that you're like stealing their spirit if you take a picture of them and it's the worst thing you could do. You know, these different cultures are on anywhere on that spectrum and so uh, she's learning how to be respectful of culture, how to use the lens to capture different aspects about you know this person or about about their culture or their traditions and practices um, and then learning how to interact in a way that's respectful um, you know that's culturally acceptable in the area she's at um, so just that you know she can learn how to be sensitive with that camera even um, but yeah, it's it's amazing. I'm glad that we homeschool because we just take our books with us. You know, we're learning ways to do it lighter. We do use Kindles, and um, with modern technology, you know, I can store an entire video library. I can have seasons of Bill Nye the Science Guy just downloaded on my phone to go anywhere. So um, technology makes it way easier to travel and do homeschool because we can take just an enormous amount of digital resources with us from place to place and the kids can do that consistently and it really allows them also to immerse in the culture of, of the different places we're at. Um, it's flexible, you know, the girls do everything with us. They go to, um, you know, whether it's helping to for example, when we were in northern Argentina along the border of Brazil, um, we did homework help for street children. So some of these kids were actually in school and some of them weren't in school. Um, but they were all, you know, some of them were in gangs. Um, you know, a lot of them we found sniff and glue and things like that. And anyway, we offered this sort of after-school program that would help kids with stay in school if they were in school and just kind of help keep other kids out of trouble if they weren't in school. And learning how to read and write and, and you know, basic, basic things like that. Well, my daughters were able to come and help these kids, uh, you know, and they were much younger at that time, so they were learning, and because they were learning Spanish, so they were learning to read and write in Spanish themselves, and then they were able to turn and teach these kids, which enforced their own learning, while at the same time, you know, enforce things like uh, compassion and unity and, uh, you know, a love for your fellow man. And, and so um, it's just really neat. I feel like it allows us to put education into practicality of life on a day-to-day -day basis in a way that you just can't do in your typical you know institutional institutionalized educational system um, yeah let's see it definitely looks different from place to place so the girls will do um, you know we might be schooling in a in a house like a normal house like we're in right now with water and electric and um, just really simple. <laughs> Basically, I can just put dinner in my crock pot and have, in the morning and have it sitting there and it'll be ready in the evening. Um, and that gives me you know, all the time in the world just to work with the kids. Uh, we might be schooling on the road. So for example, um, you know, when we drove from Michigan to Argentina, we did that whole stretch in this big 15 passenger van um, all virtually non-stop and the kids needed to learn how to you know we did we did read-alouds and and we did 
audiobooks and they needed to learn how to take notes and, and do the reports even when they're bouncing around on, you know, big potholes on the highways in Guatemala. And so um, learning to get in that rhythm and, and what does school look like there. We might do, they've done, you know, they've worked on their school projects on planes and in huts and, you know, in, um, in tents and out at refugee camps in Uganda and they've done school work you know we've been doing school work when we only get two hours of electricity a day and um, and you know when I'm busy with chores so I might when we're in places where I have a lot of food prep then we'll just move the table right into the kitchen because the only you know in a lot of the third world culture countries we're in, there are no boxed meals, so everything's from scratch, and um, and so we'll do school right out of the kitchen, and, and they learn how to help each other too, and, and teach each other, and um, it's really created a very close family relationship. I feel like we wouldn't be as close as a family if we didn't homeschool um, and you know I also feel like it set up an environment where they can learn to interact with the different cultures all around too because we have enough interaction to help guide them in, in how to do all the cross-cultural um, stuff that they do and they, they really flourish they're quite amazing